Hi everyone, my name is Arne Brüring. I'm a senior researcher at Siemens and today I will talk about network aware distributed computing. First, I would like to present to you um, our works on optimal allocation of application components, which is part of this uh, large scheme. So um, when we want to deploy an application, say for example, an AI based control of a manufacturing process, we need to think about where it can be most meaningfully be deployed. Yeah, so on the IoT device itself, so for example, a robot on the far edge, so meaning compute resources in the manufacturing plant, as an example, or edge resources nearer to the cloud, say at the telco operator. Yeah, so, or all the way in the cloud, of course, that's also possible. Uh, deciding this often boils down to a trade-off between computing power on the one hand and network latency on the other hand. And the vision that we have is to develop technology that really enables the, this, this uh, let's say, uh, compute continuum between IoT, Edge and Cloud, um, where we can then um, basically make this decision where to deploy an application um, transparent, and, and automatically decide uh, where the application is uh, allocated and the rebalancing due to dynamic changes is also done autonomically. And of course, this considers network as well as computing characteristics. Now, we can even consider that such applications, as you can see here, uh, consist of multiple components responsible for different things, of course, some might filter data, some might process the data, and it's going basically through a chain and executing this overall application. And finally, maybe acting upon the results of this um, processing. So for example, moving a robot arm in a manufacturing plant. Now, our aim is to actually also optimally allocate these components um, over a uh, infrastructure, in this case here, maybe only an edge uh, infrastructure, but could also extend to the cloud. And we want to um, yeah, allocate these components optimally. And uh, this optimization can have different goals. So can, for example, try to maximize the responsiveness of the application, can try to maximize the re reliability, or, and that's what we focused on in our um, uh, works on this uh, can try to minimize the energy consumption of the overall application. So to solve this um, problem, we have formulated a mathematical optimization problem using um, integer linear programming. You see an excerpt of this algorithm here on the right. And the algorithm uh, then receives um, two models. One represents the device and network infrastructure, and the other one represents the application. Those are the input. This is then together handed over to a solver to basically derive optimality. Um, fundamental constraint that has to be fulfilled thereby is that each application component should be allocated to one device and the resource requirements um, for this for executing this component should not exceed the resources of the device. This is a um, yeah, form of quadratic uh, assignment problem and uh, thus NP hard. So we had to actually um, come up with a heuristic so that the problem um, is reduced to a non-quadratic assignment problem that can be solved <clears throat> faster. And you find here a paper where this is described. So now we um, evaluated also our mathematical model by um, coming up with a simulation uh, which uses uh, six components in the application and six devices here representing microcontrollers, these ones here. And as I said, we tried to minimize the energy consumption. So we um, produced an energy model for uh, each of these devices and then ran an, um, a simulation uh, for all uh, 24 possible um, yeah, allocation constellations and um, the one that consumed uh, the least energy, so this uh, one at the bottom here, um, was 15% um, more energy efficient and was also the one that our mathematical model elected. So that was basically confirming our uh, approach. 
Next topic I want to talk about is distributed artificial intelligence. So also under this umbrella here. And here I want to talk about now a project which deals with the management of wind parks and there particularly the problem of detecting grease leakages in wind turbines or more specifically in the hub of the wind turbine, which you can see here a photo from the inside. And there you see the main bearing, which is this one here. So the bearing between the fixed part of the turbine and the outer part, the rotating part. You can even see here the rotor blades of the turbine. And this main bearing can have uh, grease leakages. And our aim was to detect those early on. Here you see how this develops over time. It starts with a little bit of leaking, then um, yeah, can become really ugly over time. And that is, of course, a problem uh, for the wind turbine. Um, yeah, so we plan to approach this uh, with using a camera inside this turbine hub, um, observing this bearing and, um, and then running an AI to detect whether there's oil on the images or not. What you see here is the implementation of our application that does the AI inference. <clears throat> And you see it's implemented in Node-RED, consisting of multiple such so-called Node-RED nodes. And um, together they are connected to a form in sort of a data flow. And this application is distributed over two um, devices. So this upper part here is run by a Raspberry Pi, mainly deals with getting the video stream and uh, sending image by image to the network. This node here represents the network link and the images then um, are sent to this edge device, which has enough compute resources to uh, run the AI inference. So meaning um, calculating a tensor from the image and then classifying the image and then acting upon it. Um, the nice thing about this network link is which, um, uh, so it allows us here to uh, specify all kinds of uh, network um, KPIs or QS uh, 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 re requirements. So for example, specifying a bandwidth, uh, minimum or maximum bandwidth um, required by this network link. So essentially allows us to uh, define from an application perspective certain uh, network uh, requirements. These application uh, specific requirements get translated into um, concrete SDN controller uh, commands. Um, if you want to get more details on this, you can also uh, see this um, paper here. Now the question for us was how to deal with uh, training of the AI models in the wind park. Um, and here we made use of um, a rather novel, I'm sure many of you know it already, but a technique which is up, up and coming called federated learning. Um, and um, on this slide here, uh, it's a short explanation of how it works. So we have um, multiple uh, so-called workers which participate in federated learning down here. You can imagine basically um, each wind turbine in a wind park being represented by such a worker. So a compute unit inside of the wind park is um, basically working with a local AI model and getting these um, video data from a camera. Now, in case one of the wind turbines um, has such a, a rare event of an oil leak, we can trigger a retraining of the local model uh, with this event uh, being captured. And um, the update of that model here is then communicated uh, to um, what we call the orchestrator. It's um, one wind turbine that has more uh, compute resources available to maintain an aggregated AI model. And it would receive that model update and merge it into this aggregated AI model to afterwards basically federate out this aggregated AI model to all workers of the wind park again, so that everyone is basically benefiting from what has been learned here at this worker. Besides that, there are communication efficiency uh, benefits with this because we don't send the training data, but only model updates. And also it's a kind of um, yeah, data privacy by design what you're getting because you're not sending data through the network. Right, also this we implemented using um, Node-RED. You see here 
Um, the application that we built for this with three workers, um, they can be nicely configured through a, a, a configuration dialog on each of these nodes here. So for example, we can specify the network configuration. And similarly, we can um, configure the orchestrator node here um, by, for example, also specifying the uh, hyper parameters of the AI training. Right, looking at the evaluation, uh, we saw that our federated learning approach um, achieves 100% accuracy, same as uh, a non-federated approach on this that we also tried out. Um, the federated one, however, takes uh, quite a bit longer. That is, however, due to the fact that right now we are waiting um, for the, basically for the uh, slowest uh, worker um, each epo epoch, training epoch, we are waiting for the results from that um, worker, so that slows down our overall process. Um, looking at the amount of data that we have to send through the network using this technique, uh, we see that the size of the model, which we don't send, is about 8.7 megabyte, but what we do send is then the update of that model after each retraining, that is about 11 kilobytes, which is then really low. Right, um, I want to um, further talk about a use case that we are um, currently implementing in our uh, EU project called Intelliot. Uh, and this use case deals with manufacturing or more specifically with um, what we call shared manufacturing. So there's a manufacturing plant where Customers can go to to um, hand over um, their uh, production goal, and the manufacturing plant is generic enough to handle all kinds of production goals. This goal is um, processed in the in the edge infrastructure, which also of course has these optimal allocation um, techniques included. Uh, and here we would basically then. Um, determine a concrete process plan from that goal and uh, machine orchestration. Uh, so for example, determine which robot arms and machinery has to be involved. Those are then um, triggered to basically uh, produce what has been defined here by the, by the customer. And the robot is controlled again through an AI um, and also the workpiece handling is done through the AI and um, now the use case assumes that in some situations um, this AI cannot tell the robot what to do. It reaches its limits, if you will, and in that case a human in the loop, as we call it, is approached. So here it could be the plant operator, which then takes over using augmented reality to guide the robot and um, then we would basically, uh, from this guidance, trigger again a retraining on the local AI model. Um, so basically this knowledge from the human is integrated into the AI uh, and um, we would then again uh, implement the federated learning approach. So basically send this update of the model to the edge where the aggregated AI model is maintained and from there it's federated out again to all um, production cells which have similar setups. Right, so you see at hand of such a use case that these technologies around network aware distributed systems are really crucial um, for such kinds of next generation IoT applications. So the first approach is optimal allocation is needed to maximize the utilization of the infrastructure, the compute as well as the communication part of it. And this distributed AI um, technique called federated learning that we implied is uh, really needed if you don't want uh, the training data to be transferred through the network, for example, to save on network resources or to comply with privacy uh, regulations. So um, in conclusion, I would say both of these technologies will really uh, play a, a, an important role in, in the design of future 6G architectures and uh, will, will help there a lot. Right, so thanks a lot for your attention. Uh, please feel free to contact me on this email address. You can also check out Siemens 5G uh, strategy um, on this website. 
and get more information on our current project uh, by visiting intelliate.eu. Thanks.